Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tech Talk. Uh, so we have a few uh, of the topics already there. If anyone hasn't added their topic, please add that. Uh, so one was just wanted some updates on clusters, uh, the clusters which we are newly spinning up for dot station. Uh, so we have three new clusters, all publicly available. One is AW in AWS, and two of them on MOC cluster. So the AWS uh, cluster is still uh, coming up. So we are trying to get our applications there. I uh, have posted some URLs in there through which you can access them. If you don't have access or you need access, I think this will have more restriction. Uh, I don't think everyone will have access to the namespace, but if anyone needs it, let me know. Uh, or create an issue in Toth application. Then there is small cluster, which is on MOC. Uh, uh, so this is in uh, no, this cluster has uh, is will be in the North American region. So this also will be working as semi-production slash stage, which is publicly available. Uh, in this, we will be running all the bots. So bots are already running and they are available. Uh, the Todd station uh, components and services are still uh, under maintenance. So there's one, one issue which Gregory is working on. Once it's fixed, it should be up. Uh, Prometheus and Grafana on any of these um, clusters are not yet uh, uh, set up. So we will be working along with Operate First folks to get that there. Um, and then there's a RIC cluster, which will be the publicly available test cluster. So this is all deployed, available. Uh, only Prometheus and Grafana is missing in this. Uh, short note, all this is set up by Operate First people. Uh, so in Operate First, they have uh, more clusters where they can spin up uh, based on availability. Uh, so RIC is in EMEA, uh, Smog, Smog is in North America, and AWS is also, I think, in EU West. So um, uh, this is where we will be uh, spinning up our uh, whole services. So I have also defined the ETA of everyone to be available. And that's about it. If anyone has any questions, let me know if I missed anything. Great info. Thanks. Just to come in. Rick has no ETA because it's already available, right? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Just mentioning that there is an ETA for the others. But yeah, just to clarify that the test. But, oh, yeah. Sorry. I didn't see available. Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Ignore no, me. No. No. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. Any more questions? Anyone else? Uh, so. In terms of, uh, I, like I said, like access, we uh, everyone should have access to Rick. Also, should have added access. So let me know if you are missing that. Uh, Smog and AWS. Not everyone will have added access, so you should have a view access to the pods. Uh, if you need more, uh, let me know, or we can talk discuss on that. So that's mostly it for this topic. If nothing else, we can proceed to the next one. Okay, uh, so let's move to the next one. I have added this one. I noticed this yesterday. Um, so new, I had noticed this on new clusters where uh, when a service is coming up, so for example, services are deployed via deployment config or jobs or cron jobs. So when we, try to, when the deployment config spins up a pod, it start, directly goes into image pullback issue. So image pullback issue comes in when an image cannot be seen, right? Or image is not detectable. So we use image streams, which is an object in OpenShift. And we have the lookup look look up policy true, even though it's there, uh, the pod still can't read the image from a local image stream. So, um, that seems to be an issue, and it keeps on going there with mm, uh, with errors. Uh, so I just want to know if this is some 
if someone knows if this is a known behavior in newer open shifts because everything is upgraded to 4.8 or if not uh, this was more of a question like should we start moving away from min streams and directly start using images in the components uh, that was my question So it's it, it unrelated to this, I guess, but yesterday I was uh, so working on, on deploying the triage for the application for Operate first, and they, they actually suggested to move away from image streams and move to fixed images. Uh, I, I mean, they didn't provide a, a reason. I guess it's, well, one last layer. Image streams are, are supposed to have benefits, but so it, in this particular case, so this is a deployment, not a deployment config, right? Uh, yes, this is a deployment config. Also in deployment, both we have also deployments and both have the same issue. Ah, okay. Well, because for deployments, I saw somewhere, I, I saw some deployments that were referencing, uh, I don't have it. I think it was in triage party for that application in Smoke that is managed by a deployment that references an image stream but doesn't have a, it's supposed to have an annotation for lookup through to work. And the annotation wasn't there. I, it was a quick check. I wanted to double check, but I'm just saying that the doc, let me find the docs. So the, for the example for the triage party the lookup policy was there still it was failing so the hack which i applied in there was that you copy the image uh, or the latest die or basically like saying the if the image name is triage party then you go to the deployment and you specifically def describe it's a triage party latest so what it does is deployment will go and fetch the whole sha of that image stream and it will it will use that in the pod. So that's a that's a method to fix this, but it doesn't work all the time. If I make sense, uh, let me show you. Okay. So if you see here, uh, there is I am not sharing my screen. Oh. Uh, So there's image stream triage party. If you see the YAML file, there is the lookup policy local true. Uh, so this should specify that uh, image should have. So when a pod spins up, it should look for image stream first and then go for a Docker or pod. Okay. Isn't that supposed to be long? I mean, this lookup policy be for the deployment? Uh, not the images. Ah, no, sorry. Yes, it's sorry. No, there are two parts. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Okay, that's that's correct. But for the deployment, there should be also a, an annotation. Um, okay. Well, what should be the annotation? Is that somewhere in the documentation of? Yeah, I, I pasted the link in the in the meeting minutes. So back back to. So, uh, there's a link to the documentation. Yes. Yeah, maybe this is what we are missing. So you can say. Yeah, that's the part about the lookup policies. You scroll down uh, here, you see alpha image policy open shift IO resolve names. And by the way, this only works if if the image stream is in the same namespace as the deployment, which is the case in this case, but. Oh, so we need to add this annotation. Yeah. Sounds good. So uh, that's a good, but why is it in spec annotation? Okay, so we need to just add this annotation and should look at it. I think so, yeah.
And for deployment configs, they should work already. But okay, uh, so I'll check that out. Thanks for uh, providing that. So what I did was I changed this here, the image uh, to direct image. So that's why it's able to spin out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that was only the thing. Uh, uh, if this works, then we can keep on using image streams. The reason why we use image streams is uh, because we use, uh, we have that tooling which we have written in AI CI. So whenever we release a component, for example, advisor, when our advisor is released, uh, the pipelines will also update the version string in the image stream. So it gets updated in across uh, only in the test namespace. We can deploy, define that and get uh, it gets deployed directly in the test environment without us opening up a request. So that's the reason we do that. But there is no other benefit. We can also do that in directly, but uh, that's about it. And it also comes handy if you're using one image across different namespaces, then you can directly uh, call the image stream from other namespace. You don't have to uh, put maintain an image on different places. Right. Uh, any more uh, information on this? Anything? Uh, anyone? Okay. Thanks for that, uh, Kevin. As another topic, default chemistry manager, new feature in chemistry that's default dot configuration. If it does not exist, should we include any managing by default? Kevin, do you want to say anything? This? Yeah, so it's just really short. Um, so I made a new feature in Kebishet where uh, it will basically add uh, dot thought dot yaml because sometimes people install uh, Kebishet on their uh, organization and some of the repositories won't have a dot thought dot yaml. Um, and my main question is whether or not we should include any uh, managers by default or just leave that entry blank um, and just have users uh, populate it. I feel we should at least add the uh, update manager, maybe. The, the problem with that is that we open issues. Is it that is the reason? Yeah. So so some repositories don't have uh, Python or uh, pip, pip files. So if we have the update manager, it'll start uh, opening issues about uh, missing requirements files and stuff like that. Yeah, OK. So I, Francesco mentioned maybe adding, uh, checking if, if Python code exists, or maybe if there's pip files or something uh, as a possibility, and then have it only add a manager if only have have it add an update or advice manager if uh, a pip file is there. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Should be quick to check, right? Or we yeah. should be easy to check. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it should be pretty easy to check if there's because you can just check for uh, if there's any Python files in the uh, repository would probably be enough. But is it what we want in general in any case? So if I install Kebeshet that I don't have any Python stuff, all the other things enabled with that manager won't work. Like, uh, I don't know, internal trigger will never work in the triple. Yeah, because all of our internal triggers are uh, for updating Python dependencies right now. We, we, yeah. I mean, the only thing that happens is that uh, they miss the, the, the dependency files. And we open an issue once, right? 
Yeah. Yep. But some some uh, repositories don't have dependency files on purpose because they're not Python applications. Yeah, but, but I guess but that is a problem. Our problem, or is the user that? Uh, I mean, why did you install the bot if is it is it Python based only? I mean, they, I don't know. Do we mention that is Python based only? I guess they probably did a, a, a organization wide installation. Okay. Because because we have a we have a few in uh, Thought Station that uh, aren't Python applications that. Um, that's why I noticed it opening issues um, that didn't really make sense for a repository. So in that case, what do we do? We deactivate the repo? I mean, we because Kevisha isn't explicitly for Python only because you could create a manager that does like us the scorecard or something, but because right now most of the the managers are Python because we have like the version manager update and thought advice manager, should might have. So a lot of people use that. Uh, so a lot of projects without Python use the uh, release model, which is in Capricha. Uh, the patch release major, major minor one. Yeah, which the version also, manager. Yeah, which does not. But I mean, can, can we deactivate them? Like after we check, okay, this is not a Python, can we just change the flag to be non-active or? But they, do... some, some yeah. still use the version manager even if they're not Python applications. Yeah, right. So I guess so could version manager be always active? And I mean, is there a case where you wouldn't want version manager? Well, I mean, if you don't have releases, that could be, but then yeah. version manager is not harmful either. I mean, because you wouldn't you should I mean, well, you wouldn't use it, but I mean, I'm just trying to think if if the default basic config file should include any or not so so for manager uh, so update and advisor is depending on pip5 presence but for version manager can it be always active or can uh, we... not really uh so i think the version requ version manager requires one string file which uh, can maintain the version string and also, it requires the maintainers in the GitHub IDs. So I think that is something right. which users should configure and we should provide it with uh, like, the, like the docs where they can refer and check for it. Right, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. So can we add so, more information on the managers in the PR if we don't put a manager by default, just saying, you could enable this, this is, but you need to enable it by yourself. Yeah, I can, just I can give the thought. Yeah, yeah, just link to link to documentation about all the managers. And then they can figure out what they want from there. Yeah, and similar to the, the update and advisor for the version manager, check if it the repo currently meets the requirements. And if, if yes, then enable it, right? And if not, mention it and like yeah we should mention this these cases maybe like remember that if you enable this you should have at least the requirements yeah. and stuff like that if you want scorecards you don't need anything if you want version you need a file containing the version string yeah right yeah. okay so i i should probably update some chemistry documentation and then in that PR, and then we'll be able to push it out. Is the 
Do we already like customize the, the PRs when there is an internal trigger, right? Like if it's, uh, I don't know, a new release and we relock the stuff, we open up a request saying this is coming from this for this reason? Uh, yeah, we do. Or at least the, the logic, is, yeah, I think, I think we do. But the but title right now, is also I think different. Internal triggers are delayed. Or uh, it disabled them. I don't know about the title. Um, I can. No, I was just thinking because um, we were discussing uh, Dominic uh, about the Kebeshet uh, metrics. So if I want to estimate, for example, how many times Kebeshet open this type of request because of this reason, then how do we find out from the data that that is that kind of request i mean without making it too complex for example for uh, mi to do that because usually we have a look at the title i guess right dominic yes the regex is matched yeah right now right now it's just uh, it's just in the body so so can we add something to the title? Uh, like, or I don't know, Dominic, what do you prefer better for that? Well, you mean like some more implicit information that it, it is related to Quebec? Mm, yeah, like uh, really, uh, this this request was, was open for this reason, like because of uh, a CV update, because of poor job because of, I mean, the other cases of the internal trigger. Yeah, I guess can be. Okay, so if the title is enough, okay. I, I think the title is enough descript descriptive. Okay. Uh, there was one more topic uh, which uh, me and Francesco were discussing. Uh, it was about advisor. Uh, so there is, so uh, in Todd.yaml file, you can also describe the base image. Uh, so the advisor takes in the, the in account that there is a base image which can also have dependencies already, which, uh, so when it is recommending, it, it also tries to resolve the packages which are in the repository and in the base image, and then try to give you an output. Uh, this was something which is already in use. I'm not just, I'm just not aware if it is also available in the Kabishet update. Uh, so that was an, one question which came up in just discussion. So I thought we should bring it here. Uh, if anyone has any information on that, can someone comment if it can be available or is it available with Kabishet update? Are you basically saying that if, if the package exists, it'll lock it down to whatever version exists in the base image? Uh, I'm not sure if it'll lock it down, but it'll resolve the dependencies based on that. Uh, for example, if the uh, the base image already has NumPy, which is on 1.220, and then uh, and then the uh, new the repository which is using that is also trying to update something but the version is mismatching then it tries to resolve that based on the the, the compound between both both of them uh, so here the more important question is is the cabbage update directly using tamas update or is it using or is it doing an internal call to tamas update specific function uh, it's it's doing a pip update right and the and the thought advice which kavishit provides is that all 
is what is that? That uses uh, Thamos advise here. So that uses the Thamos library directly. Oh, okay. Okay, so that, that logic already checks if there is a base image. I Means it should have been there with Thamos, so it should work there. So probably you should check there. Check with that one, right? But is it uh, enable Kebeshet in S2 Lab? We have to check in S2 Lab. I don't think there is because it's not. This is not our component. We have to request it from Open Data Hub. Okay. Uh, any other comments on this? Anything? No comments, but I have a question. Uh, so, basic question: What would be the other? So, Kebeche is using is using Tamo's advice. What could I mean? How else could it work? I mean, I'm just thinking. Of course, it uses Tamo's advice, right? That's Kebeche's role. I'm just wondering what I didn't get. What was the alternative or potential? Discrep discrepancy here, if you want. So, if you want, uh, so there was an, a case where we were discussing. It was a, a Stoi Lab Belaira, actually. I think I should write. Uh, but so, that's not. No, okay. no, no. But the problem is on the base image, we have uh, Jupyter Lab 1.3, for example. On the Stoi Lab Belaira, the pip file lock that is already there has 1.0. And uh, it when you when you use that base image with S2 I Lab Elira, you end up with Jupyter Lab one point uh, sorry three point zero, not three point one, because that is not something that uh, can be done unless you use a tot, because tot take into account the base image plus the pip file lock, and at the end it it should result in the three point one in this case, because there was a dependency right in the first image, so that was the case that we were discussing. And we were asking if this is already enabled actually in Kebeshet. Yeah. And I have another question. Kevin, I think there was an issue you commented. Now I don't remember which one. Um, ah, it was something for the external trigger. Like the first time we installed the Kebeshet in a repo, we learn uh, the manager they have, right? If they have a tot YAML file, of course. Yeah. But if this happened later, do we learn that? Like yeah. imagine the case. Okay. So so the new there's the step in workflow helpers uh, that I added um, to the Kebeshet workflow, which will update based okay. on uh, files in the repository before running Kevishet. So it updates oh, okay. the installation information and then runs uh, Kevishet. OK, 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 That's perfect. Because I saw your comment, but now I don't remember. The, I, I will look for the issue, but then we can close it. I will let you know when I find it. Mm. Uh, any other uh, topic? Uh, if nothing else, I think that was it for today. Uh, I think Christoph already added a few topics for next time. Uh, if you have anything, please do add there. And thanks for joining. See you all in the chat. Happy hacking. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.